Welcome into the Oddity Shop, you oddballs. This is the podcast where we tell you creepy, odd, weird, strange, bizarre stories from around the world. Yeah, and today it's a episode where we tell your odd, crazy, strange, weird, bizarre, whatever <laughs> stories. What's that, curator Kara? <laughs> that we have Kara? another paranormal <laughs> postcard ready to go here for you, everybody. We do. I love you guys. I love after so much begging, these write-ins are starting to come like crazy. Uh, But before we get into another short, sweet episode, reading you your own stories back, how how are you? I just took a gulp of my poppy, so I'm doing great. It's delicious. (laughs) Perfect. How are you? You know, I I can't complain too much. Um, I'm pretty sure that... You and I just got back from Mexico and Jamaica, kind of getting back to the real world after the cruise, but it was lots of fun. Well, hopefully we're alive because everybody that listened to the last uh, Paranormal Postcards, you basically told everybody that you wanted to be on a ship, natural disaster. Yeah, and, and we're pre-recording so this before we actually went on our cruise. So <laughs> when you're listening to this, uh, reach out to us and see if we're here or not and see if I finally got my dream. All right. What else you got going on? Or are, are we just getting into these postcards? We got a lot of mail piling up here. Just, I think we should just jump into it. It's like a fun short episode. People want to get in. They want to hear their stories. So these ones are kind of a collection that we um, people kind of said they're more like a high strange. OK, like the high strangeness, if you will. A little mix of could be literally anything. Exactly. And that's the best part. Perfect. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. So the first one that I have is from a writer that calls himself couple current four, five, six, nine. What do you think that means? Four, five, six, nine is definitely one of those codes that spells something. Oh, oh. Because I have one very similar to that that spells a word. So I bet it is. What's on a nine though? There's no, there was no letters on a nine, was there? I don't know. I don't even remember okay. that shit. Okay, that's, that's my guess. Let's <laughs> Dang, I wish we were cooler than that. We could come up with something so good. Couple current four, five, six, nine. If we're on to you, you have to tell <laughs> us. Okay. Yeah, I was say, maybe they can write back to us. I had an experience about eight years ago with telekinesis. I was at my girlfriend's house and in the bed sleeping when I sat up to reach for the glass of water on the nightstand. As I began to reach for it, the glass slid to my hand, which how fucking cool. That is kind of, I wish. I know. Especially when you wake up like super thirsty in the middle of the night. Oh, that would be perfect. I would want it though to just, I would want it to like hover over me and then pour into my mouth. Just like, trickle <laughs> in. like, I don't even want to put my hand out. <laughs> we'll just get you like a big hamster bottle above your bed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. This is not our story. Zach. Okay. This okay. Is his. Okay. This is the weird part. Thank you. Did you just highlight that? Oh shit. I forgot. You can see that. <laughs> scared the shit out of me actually <laughs> oh my god at first i thought you were try- you can keep all this in i thought you were trying to be nice and highlight as i read and i was like wow how thoughtful but then it kind of freaked me out yeah, i did at first and then i just started highlighting everything because i was zoning <laughs> how thoughtful <laughs> okay i'm so sorry to this poor writer okay once it happened and then the shock set in i woke up in the bed i reached for the glass again and it slid into my hand a second time. The shock sets in and I wake back up in the bed. This happened three times in a row and it feels so real. I couldn't even distinguish my reality anymore. That would be really creepy. On the third awakening, it broke down into a dream with me waking my girlfriend and calling my friends to show them this ability. I am an active dreamer and have had a fair share of lucid dreams. This will always stand out to me. The dream felt just like the real world. It gave me a great perspective on things, honestly. I also know somewhat what it feels like to move something with your mind. So it's kind of cool. Laugh out loud. Uh, What do you think about that? Okay, I think this is really cool. And with it feeling that real, what if like you have no way to know it could have happened one, two or even all three of those times like it could have actually been real and he was kind of gaslighting himself into it being a dream. I don't know. It it seems really cool. That's what I mean. And I feel like I messaged them and I was waiting for a response because I was kind of like asking more about because they said that they're like a lucid dreamer. Like I was wondering if it's more of like astral projection type of deal if they thought they were doing something like that. Um, But I just thought that was like a really 
that's just like a wild one because to have that same thing go in your head over and over again as like a quote unquote dream, but then you like are calling your friends and all these people to tell them like, look at what I can do. It's so, I don't know. I, I don't think it was just a dream. No. And if, uh, if you figure out how to do that on demand, let Kara and I know because we're thirsty in the middle of the night and this would be uh, supremely helpful. I'm always thirsty. <laughs> you say as you literally <laughs> set down your drink? I was, <laughs> yeah. All right. I got I got a postcard for you. You ready? I'm ready. This one comes from Dig Lid. And and this is a fun one. Okay. Remember the the theme is high strangeness. Okay. It's strange. I once met the machine elves after I composed this track. And then they sent a sound cloud sound. Oh my god. Sound cloud track that we will have linked down in the show notes. Which I will preface with I did not listen. Because I was scared. <laughs> I, I I listened. It is not your type of music. It's fine. It has nothing to do with the type of the music. It's just I did skim through this when it first got sent to us. And you didn't want to meet the machine elves? Not particularly. I will send it to Denise because she might want to meet some elves. Perfect. No. Okay. Anyways, we'll have that down in the show notes if you want to listen mm-hmm. and meet the machine elves yourself. So, um... I once met the machine elves after I composed this track, insert link here, and looped it. While high and in deep meditation, they were standing at the end of time, where I guess everyone hangs out. Because, according to them, it's a good jumping off point. It's like a chess player sitting at the end of a match and watching all the way to the beginning, to the first move, and knowing how it'll all play out. First, they showed me the concept of temporal causality, Time slips here. You know, this is our shit lately, Kara. True. Then they told me they wanted to help me become more multidimensional. And in order to do that, they would have to perform some surgery on my head. They first hopped on my shoulders and then they opened my head like a rice cooker and proceeded to work for about 30 minutes with this little spectralite rainbow colored power drills. I did not read any of that. They said that they had to prep my mind for and I quote, multidimensional displacement and offset spatial divergence. <laughs> what? They also re-rendered my lungs. I coughed up nasty stuff for two weeks after that, but after that, I was completely fine. Not sure if this qualifies as high strangeness. The strange thing to, to me, though, was that all the virtual instruments that I used to compose that track, I bought a year prior, completely randomly, serendipitously, and for no actual region or project. Reason or project, I can't speak. Mm-hmm. I never used any of them until a full year later. And in that moment, when I decided to create that track, seemingly on a whim, after seeing a random video or YouTube video clip of Joe Rogan talking about machine elves. At the time, I had no idea what they even were. After that whole experience, I kept wondering if I was somehow manipulated by these machine elves in order to make contact. Like, whether they paved a uh, yellow brick road through time and I simply walked down it. My best friend said they were probably up to no good Mm -mm. after he listened to the track and it gave him the heebie-jeebies and all the hair in his neck stood up. Okay, first of all, I want to know what kind of meditations you're doing and how high you were to get to these machine elves because, you know, this definitely qualifies as high strangeness. I like how they asked, like, does I don't know if this qualifies for high strangeness. Are you kidding me? Uh... Yeah, if I started listening to a song and meditating and all of a sudden uh, machine elves were cracking my head open like a rice cooker, I'm finding everyone and anyone who will listen to that story to hear out because what the fuck just happened? That is just so well, it's it's very interesting to me, too, that um, I would think that he would have like headaches and stuff, too, along yeah. with like, um, what did he say? Coughing up, whatever. Yeah, I would think that maybe he would have like a headache or more symptoms. But it is really creepy that he did have symptoms now, or a symptom. Have you heard of machine elves before? Because this is new to I me and I'm about to go down a rabbit hole. I have not. And I actually put it on my list. So Perfect. yeah, whoever gets to it first. Oh, I will let you go down the rabbit hole and I, I will sit back and I enjoy. To. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know, this is not my jam. That's why I didn't listen to that jam <laughs> because I was scared. 
Ever wanted to spend the night ghost hunting in a haunted asylum? Eloise Asylum presents Paranormal Lockdown. On April 5th from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., you can run the asylum. Discover history, haunts, and the secrets of the past, led by Metro Detroit's premier investigators. There's a limited number of tickets to this exclusive event, and it will sell out. So get your tickets today. Use the promo code HUNT and save $5 off each ticket. Paranormal Lockdown, April 5th at Eloise Asylum. Visit EloiseAsylum.com. I only listened to a few seconds. I, I'll have to go back and do a meditation and let you know if uh, they pop my head open too. All right. I'll have to remember to put this, put that link in the show notes and in like social so y'all can listen to it if you want to see if maybe you get the machine house. Perfect. And we'll all go do research after listening to this because we're all going to want to know about machine house. There we go. Ooh, creepy. All right. Do you think you can handle more? You know, I think I could do a few more. Okay. So this writer went by the name Legitimate Set 19. Nope. 9753. We're doing great with numbers today. <laughs> it's a good thing that we didn't have to like research and write an episode, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's no way. No way. <laughs> we're we're in um, vacation mode. Let's be for real. This one, this one is a strange one. Um, not quite as strange. I don't know about the elves, but here we go. I was about to almost fall down a set of stairs when a woman's arm came out of my arm and half ass caught me before I actually fell. What? Do you want me to read that again? No. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I was about to almost fall down a set of stairs when a woman's arm came out from my arm and half ass caught me before I actually fell. I don't know if reading it a second time helps, but you know what? Let's keep going. I know, it's hard to envisual this. It was a well-to-do white lady's arm with gold and diamond rings and bracelets. In the middle of the day, the arm just disappeared back into my arm. That's kind of high strange, right? And then so I replied back and I said, that's definitely high strange. Were you in a public place when this happened? Like, I'm wondering like the history if so. And the response I got back was, no, I was at home on my way out the door to go to work. Very vivid. It was a, it was hard to wrap my brain around. I had to just trust. It was okay. Okay. I've got a few, I've got a few thoughts on this one. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Here's my two theories. Theory number one. This seems almost like um, voodoo style magic or something, right? Where somebody was able to oh, like think? somehow control oh. somebody else and like maybe come out and protect them is one thought. Mm-hmm. Or the other one I would have kind of go, and I don't know why it'd be like a well-to-do white lady with jewelry, but we always talk about like that, um, the ability in high stress situations, right, to manipulate the world around you like either a mm-hmm. poltergeist from a living person or, or yeah. you know, telekinetic like we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where with this one, it's like, you know, like that moment right before you fall down the stairs, you get that huge rush of adrenaline. Like mm-hmm. maybe they are already predispositioned to so- something. Yeah. Right. And we're able to protect themselves. But that is wild. I like those two ideas. So I had two completely different ideas, Ooh, <laughs> which okay. I love. I thought that maybe it was some sort of like familiar, familiar, oh. fa- f- what, what family member oh like an <laughs> not like ancestral a familiar, like a fucking cat thank okay. you <laughs> you know what i meant yeah, yeah um i thought maybe it was like that like maybe it was some sort of family member um that was like kind of looking out like a guardian or whatnot so i was like maybe maybe something like that but then i also thought what if it was more like a um kind of like a time slip thing like maybe if that was like her however many years ahead Oh, like and just crossing paths like, oh, yeah, my God, like, it just kind of happened at the same time. Maybe maybe she had actually really fall down those stairs and like really hurt herself. So it's like her from the future, like trying to like stop Ooh. that from happening so that she doesn't have whatever issues came from like that. Some sort those, of just divine or not divine, but spectral uh, like, yeah, intervention. Yeah. OK, those are my two thoughts, but I like yours, too. I love that we came up with four Two and two, completely different. Right, off that. of about six sentences. So thank you, legitimate set. That was, I love it. That was good. All right, get ready for another. Of course. This one comes from, and I love, 
you know, and we don't care how you put your name is when you write in. You use your real name, you use a screen <laughs> name, you use a fake name. Whatever. Or you can just call yourself Beep Beep Blip Blob. Beep Beep Blip Blob. I like that. Beep Beep Blip Blob. It just rolls off the tongue. It's kind of fun to say. Yeah, it's okay. like one of the, like, if you don't want to be just anonymous, just give us a weird name. Yeah. So Beep Beep Blip Blob <laughs> says this. I sat in a medical training class today, and we watched a movie about a man with a certain medical condition. In the middle, I got up because I had to go to the bathroom, and in the exact moment as I went past the big screen TV, the person in the movie shouted, Get off the TV! I almost jumped because it felt so accurately directed at me, and everyone felt kind of weirded out by it. Nothing much, but still nicely strange. Has that ever happened to you? You know, the, and that's kind of why I picked this one, is those synchronicities happen all the stinking time, where it's like, yep. things just line up too perfectly that it feels like a message. I remember my mom telling me something like, something along the lines of this story. I wish I could remember exactly what it was, but it was almost like the same thing. And it was like my mom and dad discussing something while something was on the TV. And she said something, but his response was like, I can't, I, I can't quite remember, but like the TV said like exactly what my mom asked, like answered yes. exactly what my mom asked. And she was like, so freaked out. So it is really weird when stuff like that happens. Cause what are the chances that she got up kind of like blocking the TV? And then the right. line in the TV is get off the TV. That's insane. When those things add up or like match up, it's just so weird. I had one that was like similar to that growing up. But I remember I was reading something out loud to my mom and we were in the living room. Mm -hmm. Whatever I was reading, I was like, and then there was a loud bang. And like at that <gasps> moment, a shelf, like a floating shelf in the dining room I fell. I just got goosebumps so And bad. everything fell on the floor and it was like a huge noise. It was just like. The exact moment that we said it, right, there was a loud bang in the other room. And it's just like when those things add up, sometimes you're just that like, is there more really to creep it? Me out. I know. I know. I wonder what the T, like, get off the TV. I wonder what that means on a deeper level, you know? I don't know. BP, if you figure it out ever, you let us know. Yeah, let, let us know. I have one more for you. Ooh, okay. I have one more for you too. So let's keep this high, strange party going. All right, so this is coming from somebody that goes by Bubbly Orange 403, which I like that name. Okay, as a small child, I was outside alone on a bright sunny day. I heard a plane overhead that in passing bottled, bottled, blotted out the sun. For about two seconds, the world was in total darkness. No stars. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It wasn't like closing your eyes when it's light out and you can still sense light, it was much darker. Then everything went back to normal. I looked up thinking, how big was that plane? But it was just a normal passenger jet at normal altitude like we saw every day. I know it couldn't have been real. But still, develop my developing brain was playing tricks on me. Nobody ever mentioned anything unusual about that day. But I never experienced anything like that before or since. Okay, this is a good one because mm -hmm. this is something that I've read about in a few other episodes that we've done. Mm -hmm. um, I think one was like on the moon magic one that we did where I was looking for like strange things that have happened during oh, moon yeah. cycles. And there, I didn't put it in the episode, but there was one where somebody was talking about how like everything seemed to go dark for a minute and like everyone noticed it, but then nobody really ever talked about it again. So it seems like this is maybe something that's not a common occurrence, but happens well, more than just one yeah because clearly i just agreed with you and then you said you didn't put it in the episode so i clearly have heard <laughs> something like that because <laughs> i literally knew exactly what you're talking about <laughs> so i did pick this one though because it kind of made me feel like was it something like extraterrestrial like was it like a time slip i guess or something strange where only they experienced it and no one else did. No one was talking about it. Like if it was like the eclipse, everybody's talking about it, right? Like it's a thing. It's a buildup because we know about it, but also it's a buildup after and during like something like that. Nobody said anything about it. That's wild. Okay. I'm going my favorite route on this one. And this is going simulation theory, baby. There was a glitch okay. in the matrix. They did an update. We did a mm -hmm. quick restart, but something, something got reset and they needed to just whoop, reset the sim. It was them. They got reset. Bubbly orange got reset. Went black. <laughs> <laughs> like there a robot. we go. 
They were just doing some code updating. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to freak man. a lot of people out. Yeah, and you know me. I could talk about simulation theory all day. I will eventually cover it in an episode when I'm ready mentally to go down that rabbit say, hole. I'll never be mentally ready so on that day. <laughs> I'm just going to let you have a solo episode. I'll there we go. be on a beach. A simulated beach. A fake one. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care as long as I feel the heat, the warmth, the water, and I get tan. There Simulate you go. Simulate me, baby. <laughs> All right. Um, I have so many more things I want to say in simulation theory, but these are short and sweet for all y'all. So I got one last postcard. Are you ready? Ask me one more time if I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Perfect. Okay, we got, I think, three sentences total on this one. Oh, yeah, three <laughs> sentences. This one's good, though. It's, it's a good one to end with because we're okay. just going to leave everyone confused on a hook here. Okay. I had a vision of Christ covered in blood standing on top of the Majestic Hotel in Hot Springs, <laughs> Arkansas, when I was a child. <laughs> so specific. I called my mom over to the pool to show her, but as I was looking, lightning struck and it disappeared. <laughs> I'm not a believer, so I guess it could have just been a Jesus-like ghost? Okay, <laughs> let's break this down sentence Wait. by sentence, first of all. I'm not laughing at this person, but if you hear Delilah, everybody, I'm so sorry. But this, yeah, break this down. Let's go line by line. I love this. Perfect. Oh, and who is this from? So, uh, this is from Snoo Grapes 6933 Okay, let's break it down. Perfect. Okay, so when we're a child, the f like we're at a hotel, I'm guessing we're on vacation, and the first thing that happens to you is you see a vision of Christ covered in blood standing on top of your hotel. Um, I'm shitting my pants. I would, I would shit my pants if that's what I saw. And then, okay, line two. I called my mom over to the pool, but then lightning struck and it disappeared. Um, what the hell? Why are we in the pool when there's lightning going on? Just a little bit of dangerous. You might go meet the Jesus ghost a little too early. But I took that as there wasn't lightning pre pre that. Oh, like they just like looked just and then lightning struck. That's how okay. I took that. That's even more terrifying. That's even creepier, right? Um, and then the last line: I'm not a believer, so I guess it could have just been a Jesus like ghost. You know what? If that's the case, right? I love that there's just a ghost hanging out at this hotel. That's like I'm gonna scare the shit out of this kid. Right, right, right. Guys, look at me. Do I look like Jesus covered in blood? He's like, I'm popping up there. Like, I just imagine this is just like a fun prankster. I This is how I took it, but I'm just questioning it. So I took it as they're not a believer of Jesus. But are they saying they're not a believer of Jesus or ghosts? Jesus, right? Like, I'm not a believer, so I guess it could be a Jesus-like ghost, right? Yeah, so we're saying we're not... I'm I'm saying not a religious believer is yeah. how I get that, because then you wouldn't say it would be a ghost. Like, it would be opposite if not. That's how I took I it originally. Wrong. This one's not fun for this child that experienced this, because that's terrifying. But it's really fun for us, because <laughs> in four sentences, that was such a wild roller coaster. Three. Three sentences. Oh, it is like three. That I mean, Whatever. that is perfect. <laughs> it, it, you get us to talk for like five minutes about a three sentence story i feel um, so bad for that child like th this person as a child that experienced this because how horrifying and then you know your mom's like that was just lightning you're being right delusional. just get out of the pool and then his mom probably made his or her sorry mom probably made them get out of the pool because there was now lightning so ghost jesus ruined the day yeah you experience this horrifying thing and then lightning ruins your at least like like <laughs> me i would want to be in the simulation of a pool he got it ruined damn Ugh. ghost jesus fuck damn, you ghost jesus <laughs> well uh our number four paranormal postcard episode is ending with damn jesus damn jesus hashtag damn jesus that's all I got. Uh, keep them coming. We definitely need more write-ins. We would love more voicemails if you would just call 616-320-4935. Mm -hmm. Our phone lines are open now. And we'll take any story. You could just, you could talk to us. Even if you don't want us to play it for everyone else. You just need to tell us something. You want to talk. We're here. We take venting. We take <laughs> complaining. We take it all. As long as it's not venting and complaining about us. <laughs> Yeah, that I don't. I don't want to hear. I don't subscribe to that. All right. My mail stack's gone. You ready to get out of here for the night? Yes. Yeah. Delilah wants me to go out and play so bad. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Zach loves you. Zach appreciates you. We think you're I all do. perfect and great and cute and pretty and creepy. 
and all of those amazing things. The most important thing that we want you to do is creep a real yad balls. Mm, goodbye. Bye. Bye.